Alright, now to get started, the first thing that we want to do is start by installing Nuxt. Now for this course, I'm going to be using VS Code as my text editor. So with VS Code open, what we want to do is head over to the Nuxt documentation. And at the time of recording this course, we're currently on version 3.12. Now Nuxt version 4 is just around the corner and there are a few changes that will be happening. Many of these changes are minimal and the fundamentals that we'll be learning throughout this course won't change with Nuxt 4. And since we'll be using version 3.12, we can opt into some of these changes happening within Nux version 4. And one of the more significant updates is going to be the new directory file structure, which we will be using for this course. Now, I will be making updates to the course when Nux 4 officially releases for those who purchase the full course. So what we want to do is click on Get Started. And if we scroll down just a little bit, you can see we have our options for installing Nux. Now, to keep it simple, we're just going to be using NPM, so what we want to do is just copy this snippet, and then we want to head back over to our project inside VS Code, and then we can open up a new integrated terminal, and then we can paste in our snippet, and then we want to change our project name, so we're going to be creating a recipe app for this course, so we'll just say recipe-app like this, and then press enter. Now the first prompt you're going to have is which package manager you'd like to use, so for this course, as I mentioned, we're just going to be using NPM. Now after that's finished, the next thing we can do is initialize a new Git repository, which we are going to do. And with that completed, you can now see inside of VS Code, we have our Nux3 project. Now the next thing you want to do is you want to cd into our folder or our Nux app, and then we want to spin up our local development server. So we can say cd, and we'll do recipe app, and then we want to run the command called npm run dev. And this is going to spin up our development server, and you can see it's going to be on port 3000. So if we click on this and go to our browser, you can see here we have our brand new Nux3 project created and running inside of our browser. Now to help with this course, I'm going to recommend a few extensions for VS Code that I'll be using. First, you'll want to ensure that you have the official Vue extension installed. This was also known as Velar for those that may have used Vue in the past. Another great extension is Vue VS Code Snippets. We'll be using this extension to assist with generating our Vue files template throughout the course. Lastly, since we'll be using Tailwind CSS for all the projects in this course, I recommend installing Tailwind CSS IntelliSense. This will provide you with features such as autocomplete for classes, syntax highlighting, and also hover preview of Tailwind classes themselves. So now that we have the Nuxt application built, the next thing that we're going to do is look at the directory structure of a Nuxt app. So right now, by default, this is the version 3 way of a Nuxt application. Now, as I mentioned, Nux version 4 is just around the corner. I don't have a official release date for this, but one of the more significant changes happening within Nux 4 is going to be to the directory structure of a Nux app. So what we can do with the Nux version 3.12 is we can opt into some of these Nux version 4 changes quite easily. So what I want to do for the sake of this video and keeping it as relevant as possible to changes happening with Nux version 4 is upgrade our directory structure to the version 4 way. So we can actually do this quite easily if we head over to the Nux documentation. And here inside of the Nux version 4 upgrade information, you can see that it was planned to be released on June 14th, and it is now well beyond that at the time of recording this video. However, as I mentioned, we can opt in to testing some of these Nux 4 changes inside of version 3.12. And if we scroll down, we can see, as I mentioned, one of the more significant changes was going to be to the directory structure. As you can see, the impact level is quite significant. So we can actually change the directory structure quite easily. So how we can do this is we can automate this is by running this command right here from Codemon to upgrade our file structure to the new version within Nux version 4. So what we can do is copy this and head back over to VS Code and paste this inside of our integrated terminal. And here inside of a new terminal, we're inside of our recipe app folder, we can just paste this command to upgrade to the version 4 file structure. So we're going to need to install the following packages, which is going to be Codemon, so we just want to select Y for yes, and then hit enter. And once that's completed, you'll now see we have the new directory structure for version 4 of Nuxt. Now, since we really didn't have anything in here, the only thing that changed was instead of our app.view being out here inside of the root directory, it now resides in a folder called app. And inside of this app directory, this is where you're going to create a lot of stuff like our components, our pages, and anything that's related to the more front end of our Nuxt application. 
And the biggest reason for this directory change within Nux version 4 was to separate the front end and the back end where before everything kind of resolved in the root directory, but now all the front end stuff actually gets stored inside of this app directory. Now, in addition to that, we also have a few other directories. So at the very top, we have one called .nux, and .nux uses this directory in development to generate your view application. And if we expand this, you'll be able to see that there is a lot going on inside of this directory, but don't worry about knowing exactly what happens within this directory as it's not really going to be important to being able to build an application with Nux. This is just going to give you a little bit more insight and allow you to learn about the files that Nux generates based on your directory structure. So next we have the public directory and if you're coming from Nux2 and you're watching this as a refresh then you can also think of this as a static directory back within Nux2. Now the public directory is going to be used to serve your website static assets. Now any file served or stored inside of this public directory is going to be served at the root and it's not going to be modified by the build process. Now the last directory we have inside of the root is going to be the server directory and this is where we're going to house our server routes to implement backend functionality into our Nux application. Now I'm going to be showing you very minimal inside of this crash course portion of this course but we will be utilizing these later on within some of the applications we're going to be building in the full course. Now also inside of our root directory we have a few files such as our git ignore which is going to ignore some stuff by default that we don't want to push up to the git repository. And we have our package.json which is going to show you all the stuff that package wise is installed within this particular project. And lastly we have the nuxconfig.ts which this is going to allow you to configure your nux application with a whole bunch of different options. Now. I won't be able to cover all the different options that you can configure within here, but if you head over to the Nux documentation, there is a section for the Nux configuration. And as you can see, there is a whole bunch of stuff that you can do and configure within your nuxconfig.ts file. Now there is one change that we'll need to make to our Nux configuration, and that is going to be setting our compatibility version to version four. And the reason why we need to do this is because we did opt into the new file structure that is going to be available within Nux 4. So what we want to do is we want to copy this object for future and then we want to head back over to our project and where we have the compatibility date we want to remove this and paste in the new future object with a compatibility version and set that to 4. Now when we set the compatibility version to 4 this is going to enable all the version 4 behavior. Now we don't want that. The only thing that I want to enable that is from Nux version 4 is the new file directory structure. So inside of our Nux config we can set all the behavior to be back to Nux version 3 for some of the stuff that is changing. So for anything experimental we want to set this back to version 3 and then also we have this unhead property with a change in here. So what we can do is copy all of this and head back over to our Nux config and we can paste that in. So with this pasted in, we're going to disable anything that is experimental within Nux version 4. And this is going to allow us to use the new Nux version 4 file structure without having all the experimental changes implemented into our Nux project. And as I mentioned, whenever Nux 4 does get officially released, I will come back throughout the course for anybody that has purchased it and make the necessary updates for anything that may have been broken or has changed from Nux version 3 to Nux version 4. All right, so when looking back at the recording for this lesson, I realized that I made a mistake when we pasted in this future object containing the compatibility version, which we set to four. So the error that we made is we actually removed something called the compatibility date, which is recommended. And this just simply sets a compatibility date for our application. And by default, when we created this app, it was set to April 3rd, 2024. So we just wanna set that back here and then we should be all set. Now in the next lesson you're gonna watch, this is actually removed, but in the lesson beyond that, we're gonna have this added back to our Nux configuration.